Vin Future Prize, a new global science and technology prize for humanity from Vietnam. One Vin Future grand prize of $3 million. Three additional special Vin Future prizes valued at $500,000 each. Vin Future Prize honors science and technology work that creates or has a high potential to create meaningful change in the everyday lives of millions of people. Join us to make a change for a better future. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and our beloved scientists. I'm Ming Xiang, the Communication Secretary of the Vin Future Prize, and today I'm really happy to be the moderator of today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth information, the fourth information webinar of the Vin Future Prize 2022. And today's webinar is for the time zone of Africa. It's now 11 a.m. in Johannesburg, and we hope that this is a very convenient time for you to join us in this webinar. Today's webinar, uh, we, after today's webinar, we'll have the last two webinars for Asia and Oceania. And please look at the chat box for more details. Before we start, please mute your microphone for the video <coughs> and audio quality. And we would love to uh, inform you that uh, the meeting today will be recorded for our uh, record and also for the purpose of note taking. So if you have any objection, please let us know. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, and our beloved scientists, it's uh, almost uh, more than one year since the Green Future Prize was founded in December 2020 uh, as the Global Science and Technology Prize originates in Vietnam. And uh, this year we launched our call for nominations in uh, last February 16. And since then, we're so grateful that we have the support uh, of all of you as our nominators and nominators to be. And up um, to, till today, uh, today we have the most updated figure that I wanna share with you. We have almost 2000 nominators who have accepted to be our official nominators. And this is really um, a great, figure uh, for us to keep going. And I think we, we hope that this is also a, a motivation for all of you as nominators to invest in your nominations uh, with 100% of your focus and efforts. <clears throat> And for today, uh, we hope that our series of webinar, uh, especially today's webinar, to uh, support you with all the details and information you need in the time of submission, uh, of your submission. And uh, first, uh, we would like to introduce to you the panelists of today's webinar from the Vin Future Foundation. Let us welcome Professor Sir Richard Henry Friend from the University of Cambridge. He's the chair of the Vin Future Prize Council. Thank you for your presence. And we also uh, want to welcome Professor Anta Schutt from the University of New South Wales and the George Institute for Global Health from Australia. Welcome, Professor. And it's really interesting. Today we have the presence of, uh, I have to say that it's a very um, surprising presence of Professor Gerard Muru, uh, one of our prize council member. Welcome to our webinar. And we hope that today you can share something with all of our nominators and nominators to be, and also share your feelings uh, when you uh, join one of our webinars. Thank you very much for joining us today. And from the Win Future Foundation, we would love to introduce my dear colleagues at the prize uh, secretariat, Dr. Mingang, Dr. Viet Bak, and Dr. Peng Yun. The agenda of today's session will include first the sharing session from Dr. Mingang about our foundation and also about our founders. Next will be the sharing with the panelists about the pre-screening and selection process. The talk will be followed by an introduction about the Vin Future Prize by the chair of our webinars today, Professor Richard Henry Friend. And then Dr. Mingang will be back for the nomination form. Uh, and last but not least, we will have the Q&A session. And right now, please welcome Dr. Mingang for the first parts of today's webinar. He will walk us through the session of sharing about our country, Vietnam, about the founders and also the foundation. Please, Dr. Mingang. Um, thank you, Chen. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Minan, and um, I am the executive secretary of the Green Future Foundation. 
on behalf of the foundation, I would like to thank you for spending your precious time with us today. And I hope that you will find this session informative and valuable. I'm going to start out today by sharing with you about our country, Vietnam, followed by the introduction about our founders and Vin Group. And then I will share with you fundamental information about the Vin Future Foundation. First, about Vietnam. Vietnam is located in Southeast Asia with a population of 96.2 million. Recently, positive transformation has been happening in our country, and we have been recognized as a new tiger economy in Asia. This is what we are very proud of. Vietnam is a dy dynamic country. Our people are friendly and welcoming. We work hard and we are very eager to learn. Second, I would like to share about our founders, Mr. Phạm Nhật Vượng and Madame Phạm Thu Hương. Mr. Vượng was born in 1968. After graduating from a Russian university, he started his first business, which later turned into Wing Group. In 2013, he was named by Forbes as a self-made billionaire who became successful with his own effort and hard work. Mr. Vu is a visionary leader who has a great passion to do things which make life of people beautiful. In Vietnam, he's a very respected person thanks to his philanthropy. In 2020, he was honored as the Forbes Heroes of the Philanthropy in the Asia Pacific region for his significant contributions to Vietnam's pandemic relief. One of the sayings of Mr. Vu that we respect and admire, he says, I don't care how much money I make. I want to build things that make life beautiful. The co-founder is his, his wife, Madame Phạm Thu Hương. She's the vice, she's the standing vice president of Fing Group, graduating from a Ukrainian university with a master's in international law. She has accompanied Mr. Vu since the early days and has always been one of the senior leaders of Ving Group. Ving Group is now Vietnam's largest private corporation, focusing on three core pillars, industry, services, and social philanthropy. We have a track record of transforming new businesses into market leaders. You can see that we are the pioneer and largest player in any market we operate, from real estate, hospitality, to healthcare, education, and mobility. I would like to share with you that about 10 days ago, VinFast, a company of Vin Group, has built an electric vehicle and battery manufacturing facility in North Carolina, the United States. This news was tweeted by President of the United States. And now the philanthropy of Vin Group, we are very active in promoting education, healthcare, and people development. In 2020, the Kai Hart Foundation of Vin Group donated more than 400 million US dollars to fight COVID-19 and contribute to other charitable activities. Vin Group operates Vin School, a not-for-profit K-12 education system with international standards and Vin University, the country's first and only not-for-profit university with a mission to develop talents for the future. The group also funds the science and technology scholarship program for masters and PhD students in Vietnam. So hundreds of students can have the opportunity to study in the world's leading universities. In the field of healthcare, Vin Group opened VinMec the largest private healthcare system in Vietnam, pioneering in applying technology to provide the best healthcare to the society. And now I would like to share with you the mission of the VinFuture Foundation and its key activities. In December, 2020, the VinFuture Foundation was founded and financed by Mr. Vu and Madame Hung as a not-for-profit foundation with the endowment of 100 million US dollars. 
The foundation's mission is to build a future where breakthrough scientific research and technological innovations empower people, positively enhance their lives, and create a more equitable and sustainable world for the future generations. We are working towards the mission through five activities. First and foremost is the annual Green Future Prize. The second activity involves grant making strategy. We also work to promote STEM and innovation based curricula in the education system. And we also work on long term partnerships with prestigious institutions in science, technology, and industry. And now, I would like to call your kind attention to a very short clip about the award ceremony last week, last year, so you can get to know a little bit more about us. The clip is in Vietnamese with an English subtitle. Thank you. Thế giới đổ tồn sự chú ý về Việt Nam khi lần đầu tiên nơi đây hội tụ những trí tuệ hàng đầu thế giới. Khi lần đầu tiên, một giải thưởng toàn cầu được khởi xướng và tổ chức tại Việt Nam. 1.134 đối tác đề cử từ 71 quốc gia ở 6 châu lục. 599 đề cử được gửi đến. Trong đó, 100 đề cử thuộc top 2% các nhà khoa học được trích dẫn nhiều nhất thế giới. 43 dự án xuất sắc, vinh danh 4 công trình kiệt xuất, đột phá, hiên phong, có tác động tích cực lên cuộc sống của hàng tỷ người trên trái đất. Lễ trao giải VinFuture đã trở thành sự kiện tâm điểm của giới khoa học toàn cầu và Việt Nam. Với hơn 3.000 tin bài trong nước và quốc tế, 1,6 triệu lượt xem trực tiếp và trực tuyến, sự kiện lễ trao giải VinFuture đã góp phần nâng tầm vị thế đất nước Việt Nam trên bản đồ khoa học và công nghệ toàn cầu, kết nối cộng đồng khoa học công nghệ trong nước với các nhà khoa học hàng đầu thế giới. Những khoảnh khắc dâng trào của cảm xúc, đó là ấn tượng của sự chỉn chu, Đến từ sự đón tiếp nồng hậu mà trọng thị Đó là sự hoàn mỹ của một sân khấu đẳng cấp và tinh tế Đó là sự thăng hoa khi hội tụ tài năng hàng đầu quốc tế Nghệ sĩ John Legend huyền thoại của thế giới Tiếng đàn của thiên tài piano Đặng Thái Sơn Cùng một Việt Nam mê hồn với áo dài nón lá của nghệ sĩ ưu tú Linh Nga Và đó là khoảnh khắc vỡ hòa hạnh phúc của người được vinh danh chiến thắng Với mỗi người Việt Nam VinFuture còn là sự tự hào kiêu hãnh của dòng máu Việt khi lá cờ tung bay trong tiếng nhạc quốc ca khi những biểu tượng văn hóa Việt chống đồng hoa sen được tôn vinh khi kỷ niệm trương VinFuture được sản xuất hoàn toàn thủ công mạ vàng bởi nghệ nhân người Việt với hình tượng chữ V đầy ý nghĩa và khi bằng khen của các nhà khoa học chiến thắng được sử dụng chất liệu giấy gió truyền thống như một lần nữa khẳng định những niềm tự hào chân quý của người Việt gửi tới bạn bè quốc tế nơi khoa học kiệt xuất gặp gỡ nghệ thuật đỉnh cao nơi kết nối trí tuệ trái tim và niềm tin của con người trên toàn thế giới nơi người Việt Nam tự hào tôn vinh với những giá trị bản sắc văn hóa Việt với bạn bè quốc tế và liên tục vươn tới những đỉnh cao Welcome back to the fourth information webinar of the Vin Future Prize 2022. And now I would like to move to the next part of our webinars today. It's the sharing with the panelists. The first question I would like to ask the surprise guest of us today, Professor Gerard Muru, the Nobel Laureate. Uh, it's really our surprise present to have you today in our webinar. So hello, Professor Muru, can I ask you some questions? Oh, we hope that we can talk with him can later. You hear yeah. Hi, Professor Muru. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Hi. Really nice to see you today. And I have to say that it's a surprise to have you in this webinar. And talking about surprise, I have a question for you. Um, yeah. You. Can you remember about the first year, the inaugural season of In Future Prize? Anything surprised you in the first year, like the nominators' nominations, or the prize, or the award ceremony? Anything? Uh, yes, I think it was really very. Uh, I mean, I was very impressed by almost everything. I have to say. You know, very, uh, you know, the management of the, the prize was very well done and uh, 
You know, we had chairman, you know, um, Richard Friend, who did a marvelous work and so on. And then you guys, I mean, uh, did, uh, did wonderful. I mean, I was amazed to see the number of, uh, of um, uh, people involved and, and so on. So, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward for the next year number two, you know, in uh, Win Future Prize. Thank you. Yeah, with your presence in Vietnam in the second season of In Future Prize. Um, another question, just a very short question for you. So today, uh, today's webinar is for nominators. We we didn't start everything with the award ceremony or other things. We start with the nominators, and they will give us very high quality nominations and nominees. So, do you have anything uh, to share with our nominators who have been here today? Uh, well, I mean, uh, not really. Uh, I think it's very nice to see that you have 2,000 nominators. So I'm sure they are going to, we are going to do a good job. <laughs> Thank you, no, Nobel Laureate, Professor Gerard Muru, for your presence. And um, thank you so much. I hope that you enjoy the webinar today. Uh, the next question I want to ask um, our uh, co-chair of today's webinar, Professor Anta Shud. Um, I know that, as far as I know, uh, you have uh, some experience working in Africa. And can you share a little bit about uh, the science community in Africa? And also, uh, do you have any advice for nominators regarding the ca category of innovators from uh, developing country? Please, uh, Professor. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I have spent uh, several years in, in South Africa and working also across other uh, African countries. And uh, I would really like to encourage the um, potential nominators that's uh, joining us today to uh, put a lot of thought in submitting nominations, especially from uh, we need more high quality nominations from developing countries. And I know there are excellent science being conducted uh, that's really deserving of, of the Win Future Prize. Uh, we've had, uh, as last year, the, the winners from South Africa for the De Developing World Prize, which were of an excellent standard. And, uh, but I think there can be more. And uh, therefore, I think if there are anything that uh, people are unsure of, to really get in touch with the Win Future administrators, which have really, uh, as was mentioned before, they are fantastic in quick responses and clear answers. So. Um, I think there's great potential, and this is a fantastic platform to showcase the work that's being done. Thank you, Professor Anta. And uh, today we have Professor Muru from France, we have Professor Anta Schutt from Australia, and we also have another special guest, uh, Professor Sir Richard Henry Friend from London, uh, the United Kingdom. And the next question I would like to ask our chair of Green Future Prize Council. Uh, Professor Friend, um, I have a question for you, and actually it's, um, it's an example that maybe it will happen in this year's season. Uh, if we have a female science scientist and she's working in an emerging field, and if she's, she's from a developing country, and maybe, maybe her innovation is so great and enough to be, be, to be the grand prize, so what should the name, nominator do? <laughs> That's a good question, and I hope it's a problem that the, 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 the Prize Council has to grapple with. That would be very exciting. The simple answer is it doesn't matter. Uh, nominators should nominate for which prize they think most appropriate, but we, the Prize Council, will look very carefully and we will move nominations between categories if we think that is the best course of action. So I would say, just concentrate on capturing where the innovation lies, providing the background, providing the context, and we will do the work. We have a, an excellent team uh, working um, tirelessly in Hanoi. Uh, so, and we have a lot of capacity to do the extra work to match great nominations to the correct prize. Thank you very much. And we're always 
very proud that we have a part of our team, a great team of us, a part of our team is your support and the support from the Prize Council and also the pre-screening committee. And uh, thank you very much. And right now, I would like to invite you to give all of our audience, all of our beloved scientists, um, a, a brief introduction about the Vin Future Prize. Please, Professor Friend. Thank you. I just need to... Um... I hope that's coming across correctly. Yeah, we can see it now. And I'll now go into presentation mode. <clears throat> that, that's coming across correctly. Good. OK. Uh, well, it's a great pleasure and honor for all of us on the Prize Council um, to have been involved with this, this great prize um, or set of prizes. Uh, the, the first thing to say is that these are very substantial prizes uh, amongst the largest that are awarded internationally. Um, and they are special uh, in ways that I'm going to talk about more. But just to remind you, we have a grand prize valued at 3 million US dollars. Uh, and then we have three special prizes, innovators from the developing countries, female innovators, and what I would call emerging field um, Prize, the, the Emerging Field Prize. The, and each of those are valued at half a million dollars, so they are already very significant. So what's special about the VIN Future Prizes um, is that they really do couple um, uh, the importance of uh, fundamental innovation uh, right the way through to making um, real benefit to uh, everyday lives across the whole world. Uh, so it's it's very important that this prize is uh, has uh, has come from um, a uh, rapidly developing part of the world, Vietnam, that we've just been hearing about. It's very important that th these prizes are seen to. Uh, and reach widely across um, all of science and engineering and technology. And that uh, in contrast to uh, more established prizes, uh, we, we will be searching very, very widely. So we want to start with some real kernel of innovation, of uh, something that has been um, glimpsed, turned into reality, that is unexpected and significant. And we really do want to see how that has found its way or is finding its way uh, to, to, to benefit uh, ordinary um, uh, living around the world. So uh, turning to point four, the real world problems, we've aligned that with the 17 um, sustainable development goals set out by the United Nations. They uh, do a good job and we take real note of that. One point that I would like to make is that last year um, we were discovering how it was all going to work in practice or how it did work in practice. And what we do find that we have to consider is Certainly for the grand prize, we do want to, we do require that the impact has been global. And of course, the grand prize went to uh, some of the key uh, uh, innovators for the mRNA vaccines that have made a big difference globally uh, to uh, control the um, COVID pandemic. For the three special prizes, we absolutely want to see that potential for impact uh, on a global scale, uh, but we have, uh, we, we will perhaps look for potential rather than full demonstration on a global scale. Uh, we, we want to catch things that we know are going to, and innovations that we know are going to be important, um, but we might be, we, we, we would want to catch those perhaps earlier in their development cycle. So there's a lot of information on the web pages. Um, the, um, I, I chair a very distinguished prize council. Um, I'm not going to mention uh, all of the names um, or, or, or of the prize council, but we're delighted that Gerard Maru is able to join us uh, today. 
the, we are um, a group with um, broad experience and um, we have, I have some very, very distinguished colleagues um, on the Prize Council. What is important to recognize is that the, we on the Prize Council are not experts at everything, but we are familiar with the challenge of uh, recognizing where something important has happened outside areas we know um, uh, as our own special research areas. So we absolutely want to be able to make awards outside just the special skills of the Prime Council. And we, we're, we're very well supported by the, the team in Hanoi to provide us that extra background. So do not see the Prime Council as um, uh, confining the scope of the prizes by what we know. Um, we're absolutely determined to reach very broadly. Um, uh, then we have the uh, pre-screening committee, um, uh, and we have um, uh, uh, Pro Professor Altashut, uh, uh, who has joined us uh, today, um, who uh, I know did a huge amount of work last year. What is very important about these prizes is that we search very widely from around the globe, and we get a very large number of nominations. And I know that all those nominations were looked at very seriously. Um, by the Secretariat and by this pre-screening committee so that we have the capacity to look um, very carefully at everything that comes in. Uh, on the nomination process, at the moment, nominations, the call for nominations is open. Uh, that will close um, mid-May. There is then a lot of work to do during the summer with the pre-screening, uh, and then during the fall, uh, we, we do um, in-depth review and selection, um, and uh, we will announce the prizes um, uh, early um, in 2023. Now, what is so special about these prizes is that the nominators play a very important role um, because you are our conduit to reach very widely um, into uh, both uh, geographically, but also by area of innovation. The, the rules are quite straightforward. Um, we have no self-nominations. Um, we want nominators. Um, we have reached very widely uh, to, um, to find um, uh, significant individuals um, in recognized institutions, uh, we we have um, we we look for organisational and institutional nominators and individual nominators, uh, but we have um, but uh, again a lot of work has been done to to reach very widely and we're delighted to see uh, all of you here um, at today's meeting. Each nominator can nominate once for each of the four prizes. And as, uh, as I mentioned earlier in response to uh, um, the, the earlier question, do not worry too much about which um, prize you nominate a candidate for. Uh, so we have uh, key nomination criteria. And again, a lot of this information is available um, on the web. Um, uh, I've talked about one. Importantly, number two, we have no limit as to how many people you can put into a nomination. Where we're trying to capture the, uh, an innovation that maybe started out um, a long way from application, but then pulled its way through to application, it may be that there are more than one uh, teams um, uh, that were involved at critical stages um, along that trajectory. And we would like to be able to uh, capture that full uh, journey uh, of, of innovation. So if you think that a larger number of people than are traditionally um, uh, selected as, as prize winners is appropriate for that innovation, please include all those individuals. That, that, that we think is very important. Uh, so uh, three, um, we... we um, we're looking for underlying solutions. Um, that is to say that we're looking for, if you like, the scientific um, and uh, engineering innovation. We're not 
really wanting to um, reward those or recognize those who were involved in the later stages of commercialization. But, but if there are, if you like, engineering innovations that, that really are engineering innovations that maybe happened in industry, that would be fine. Uh, that would be great to pick out. It's often quite hard to find those details. And to point four, I mentioned earlier that the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals uh, are a very useful checklist for um, where, where the benefit of, um, of science-based innovation uh, can bring um, its uh, impact globally. Number five is that we are not looking for speculation. We do need solutions, innovations that we know work that obviously um, should be in place. Uh, and six and seven, uh, again, picking up on things I said earlier, we do want clear evidence of an end product or service which has an everyday practical application. Uh, and that, that certainly for the grand prize, we really do want to see that the benefit um, is on a very large scale. And the uh, potential benefit and evidence that that trajectory is well on its way uh, is, is, is also um, a, a necessary requirement for, for, for all the prizes, but, but they're um, particularly for the special prizes. So, so that's a quick run through um, with perhaps my, my, my perspective, my, uh, my emphasis on the points that I know that we found to be um, important when we worked through our first round last year. I have some slides um, picking up on the um, celebratory event that took place in January this year um, for, the, uh, for the first round of the prize. Uh, we had a week of events culminating in the, um, the, the, the prize awards. Uh, so we in, uh, we had a, a, a number of um, um, uh, uh, seminars, meetings discussing uh, areas of, of 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 importance for um, uh, for, for um, global benefit, from uh, science of life to energy, um, and to um, 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 uh, AI and and its potential. Um, and then, we, of course, we have our prize winners, um, and there's lots of information on the web on our prize winners. Um, uh, and um, I, I will just briefly um, linger on the slide where, uh, as you will know, the grand prize we uh, we gave to um, uh, Dr. Carrico, Professor Weisman, and Professor Cullis for their fundamental contributions to the evolution of mRNA vaccines. The special prize for female innovators to Jenan Bao uh, for the development of um, uh, printable flexible electronics and its application for biosensing and, and healthcare. Uh, the Emerging Fields Prize we gave to Ama Yagi, um, who invented the field of um, so called MOFs, metal organic framework materials that have huge potential for um, uh, energy. Um, from gas storage, gas separation, water purification. Um, and then the um, prize for uh, innovators from developing countries, we, we gave to the two professors, Karim, uh, for their uh, really important work on bringing um, uh, HIV um, control uh, in South Africa. So the, those first set of prize winners uh, gives you a context for uh, how high we're aiming with these prizes uh, and the sorts of features that we saw um, uh, as fit to, 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 to honor. But the big ambition as we go forward is that we reach very widely, that we do want to find our prize winners in areas of endeavor that are not the obvious ones, but nevertheless, they're significant and we do want to reach as globally as we can. So I will st stop at that point and hand back to the um, Secretariat.
Thank you very much, Professor Friend, for your sharing. And I hope that now all of our nominators will have some more information about our prize, the future prize. And if you're ready to uh, start your submission right now, I would like to uh, get you through the um, nomination process and also the submission requirements. This information will be given by our secretary, uh, our secretary from the Vim Future Prize, Dr. Minghe. Please, Dr. Minghe. Thank you again, Chang. Um, and um, hello, it's me again. I'm very happy to represent uh, the uh, tireless team in Hanoi that Professor Friend mentioned in um, his um, opening um, of the presentation. Um, I'm very pleased to walk you through uh, some most important contents and, um, um, and features of the nomination portal and the nomination form. So uh, first of all, um, about the nomination portal, um, you know, uh, you can go to online.vinfutureprize.org slash nomination, or you can scan the QR code uh, you see on the screen now to open the nomination portal webpage. <laughs> And on this page, uh, you can download the instructions and the endorsement letter template. Um, in the instructions, uh, you can find the concrete nomination form where you can draft the nomination whenever you have time and then copy paste the draft into the online portal. Um, there are seven content tabs at the nomination form. And I would like to call your attention to tab numbers number five and number seven. Uh, on tab number five, uh, you are invited to give your evaluation of the nominee's invention, including uh, the scientific fundamental knowledge, uh, uniqueness and advancement of the invention. And then you are invited to give the most significant social economic impacts of the invention uh, for example, the number of beneficiaries, uh, people, countries, and continents. And uh, please indicate um, how this invention has transformed or will potentially transform everyday lives of millions of people. And last but not least, uh, pre please provide the history of the invention as for when and how the invention started and who else except the nominee or the nominees was involved in initiating or contributing to the invention. <clears throat> and then um, on tab number seven, um, you can see uh, the uh, supporting documentation and evidence. That's a requirement of the uh, nomination form. Um, there are several uh, documents that um, are required um, for the nomination form. But again, I would like to call your attention to uh, two key uh, documents uh, that you need to attach here. Uh, the first one is the, the CV of the nominee um, or the CVs of all the nominees if you are um, nominating a group of people. And then uh, please attach an uh, endorsement letter. Um, so we are encouraging uh, three letters, uh, but um, one letter is mandatory. Um, you can also um, provide the um, endorsement as um, 200 words um, at page six, um, you can find there, um, or you can um, attach a PDF file of the letters here at tab number seven. And then if you have any uh, important publications or patents of the nominee, uh, please attach here at tab number seven. So if uh, in the uh, nomination uh, submission process, uh, you have any questions and um, face any technical issues, uh, please feel free to let us know at secretariat at vinfutureprize.org. Uh, we are always there for you and we will be more than happy to assist you in your nomination process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ming -Eng. And please, send us any question, or even if you want to have the slides that we have given today, uh, you can ask us to uh, provide to you through the email <coughs> Dr. Ming Yang has just mentioned, secretariat at vinfutureprize.org. And right now, we will move to the very important part of today's webinar, the Q&A session. Now it's time for all of you here who joined today to have some questions, to ask questions directly to our um, panelists. 
uh, and also to um, uh, our secretariat. Uh, right now, before, uh, um, during the time we're waiting for the first question, I will start with a question that I have collected from before our webinar. If I attend this session, will I have an obligation to submit a nomination <laughs> or is it still under my discretion whether to submit a nomination for this coming round? So, Dr. Ming Eng, do you want to answer this question or you want to ask someone else? Oh, I, I would like to uh, invite Professor Anta Shu to address this very, uh, very interesting question. So, if I attend the, the session, will I have the obligation to submit a nomination? Or is it still under my discretion whether to submit a nomination for this coming round? Please, Dr. Anta Shu. Thanks. Um, yes, of course, it's no, no obligation to submit the nomination, but we Obviously, I hope that when you attend the session that you have an interest and would strongly encourage you to uh, submit a nomination. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. So um, this, uh, you know, just to let you know that it's your, your right um, to, to nominate people, uh, but we very much encourage you to nominate. And uh, sometimes um, a nominator does not have the whole package of information but as Professor Fran mentioned today, uh, do not worry uh, because um, we have a team here to assist you. And if we, um, we can uh, help you in finding some more information um, to assist your process, please let us know. And even in the evaluation process, um, if, you require, if it, we require more information, uh, we'll reach out to you and ask for your support in that process. Um, we have a very uh, interesting question that I would like to um, ask our chair of the prize council, Professor, Professor Friend. How many people can one nominator nominate? So one nominator can make one nomination for each of the four prizes. But for each of those prizes, you're nominating for the innovation, and there may be several people who you consider made that contribution and again i would encourage you to uh, include everyone you think should be um, a co-winner for that of a prize for that innovation right. thank you professor friend and um, i would love to invite all of you if you have any question please raise your hand use uh, you can use the raise hand function to let us know what are you uh, concerning about uh, in the submission process and I have one question, a very interesting question from uh, Professor Oye Will Tomori. Can a nominator be nominated? And then should he or she resign as a nominator? <laughs> so uh, who can answer this question? Um, maybe Professor Richard Friend? Yes. Yeah, please, Professor. Well, the, 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 thank you. It's an important question. Uh, two things to say. The first is that you cannot nominate yourself. And the second is that we, we, we encourage you to keep nominations confidential. That's the standard for uh, prizes of this standing. Um, but if you happen to be nominated by somebody, that's fine. Um, there's no reason why you should not be a nominator. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I would um, like to invite all the uh, attendees um, uh, just uh, turn on your, um, your, your, your microphone and ask a question directly to the Prize Council and the Pre-Screening Committee. This is a very good opportunity uh, for you to share your thoughts uh, and to clarify anything that you would like to. Uh, you, just, you can just mute, unmute yourself and ask a question directly to Professor Fan and Professor Anta Shud. All right. Um, okay. Um, I... Um, um, I, I think that uh, there is a, a very uh, interesting question um, that um, needs uh, your um, advice or expertise. Um, okay. Um, the question is um, from uh, Dr. Hanane Iyama uh, Imayi. Is the selection of the winner is country-based or innovation-based? Because last year, most of the winners were from the same country. That's very interesting. Um, okay, uh, Professor Atashut, uh, could you please address the question? 
The innovation can be absolutely from any country. It's not country based, it's truly innovation based. And it's in fact, um, as was clearly mentioned before, it's really how impactful an innovation is globally or in how many countries or in how many people. So the impact that it has already demonstrated or can potentially demonstrate is really one of the key factors we take into account. But innovation can come from absolutely any country. There were several different countries where um, winners came from in effect. Right. Thank you very much, Professor Antasud. Um, a very, very good question uh, coming from Dr. Abdallah Kassam. Um, can a nominee be nominated with two different nominators? Even the nominators do not know each other. Professor Fenn, please. Well, that, that, that we hope happens. Um, uh, if, if there's an interesting innovation, um, it may well be that there are independent nominations. Um, and that, of course, we will take a lot of notice of if, if, if people in, with different perspectives um, all think that there is a very strong case for an innovation um, that's very strong. On the other hand, we will work very hard to look at a, nomina a, a, a nominee who has only one nomination, because that is the way that we will find uh, nominations for innovations that are less well known, that are not, if you like, um, those that are well known in the developed world. So we will, we will take account that we have the capacity to do the extra work, to do the exploration needed to look seriously at every nomination. Right, thank you very much, Professor Fran. Uh, we have a very interesting question, very valuable question from Dr. Giacomo Cavalli. Um, he asked, um, if I understood correctly, the prize cannot be awarded for breakthrough scientific discoveries which have not yet resulted in a breakthrough product, right? So Professor Atasud, could you please address that question? In effect, that is true. Um, that is what makes the Win Future Prize different from other prizes such as the Nobel Prize. Um, it's really about the impact. Um, so yes, uh, there were some nominations before that had that criteria, but there were others with greater impact, and that was uh, that weighed heavily in the decision making process. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, I, yes, Professor Friend, please uh, could you please add more? Well, I, I absolutely agree with with, with what Alta said. Uh, I, 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 there is always a question about what does a, what is a product. Is it something that is is in the market but is yet to be huge scale, mm -hmm. um, or has it become huge scale? And that is something where uh, 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 I would encourage nominators to um, think about. But if if you think that something is is in the market, it may be a small market at the moment, but there's a very strong expectation that it'll become a large market. Please nominate. Mm, thank you very much, sir. Um, I think that um, Dr. Artyom um, Onga, um, Onga now, um, uh, has a very, very valuable um, question. Um, I, I, I would like to invite um, both Professor Fern and Professor Antasud address this question. Um, can one nominate someone for a Nobel level breakthrough uh, which broadens our understanding of fundamental laws of nature, but does not lead to any applications. The only one of 17 goals that could possibly be linked here is quality education. That's a very high level question. Uh, Alta, do you want to <laughs> give um, a... <laughs> you, 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 can, you can add on, please, uh, Richard. I would say... Um, do nominate if you uh, do nominate and uh, it will be carefully considered that that I think you can be assured of um, the the impact factor is really an important aspect here um, but if it is on a noble level fundamental breakthrough as you've stated um, it's definitely worth consideration and um, I think it will be carefully reviewed I mean, the, the thing I would add to that is that it's a, there are very few fundamental breakthroughs that don't turn out to be useful. Just, <laughs> just may just have to wait. 
Right. Thank you very much. Um, I think another question uh, coming in uh, today just now, um, and I, I would love to, um, to invite you both um, to address again the question, which is in a very high level of intellectual capacity. Um, for the category inventor uh, from a developing country, which countries are defined as developing? Is Russia in this list or China? Also, what is exactly understood as inventor? Does a scientific discovery quality as an invention? Again, um, also from uh, Dr. Artyom uh, Aganov. Uh, please, um, our pre screening and, and prize council. Well, maybe I can um, start on this. Um, we are using the United Nations definition of developing country. Um, that is a bit arbitrary, and you can argue whether it's the right list. But by the token that we've uh, we, we've decided to stick with the seventeen United Nations Sustainable Sustainability Goals, we've decided to stick with the United Nations categorization um, for developing countries. That only applies to that one special prize. Um, we do have four prizes. And uh, there is, if, 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 if you feel that this is the, the way that definition of developing countries um, falls is not, uh, not potentially excludes um, a nomination, I would ask you to think carefully about making a nomination in um, one of the other categories. But we had to make some choice and we have decided to, to work with the United Nations um, uh, selection for that. Um, so the second question, what exactly, um, what is understood as inventor? Does a scientific discovery qualify as an invention? I, I think the simple answer is yes. These are perhaps just different descriptions of the same thing. And that is um, an unexpected realization of an opportunity. Uh, an opportunity to, to understand, but where that understanding, uh, which might, if you like, be the scientific discovery, opens up opportunities to produce something that is useful for mankind, that's fine. Thank you, Professor Fern. Uh, Professor Antashut, uh, would you like to add more? No, I think that was clearly answered. I have nothing further. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, uh, we have um, one very valuable question from uh, Professor Reader. Um, can you share scores of our nominations uh, from last year so that we know where does the, this nominee stand so that we do not re-nominate this year if the score is too low? I would like to invite Professor Antasu to address that question. <laughs> That, that is a very good question. I'm not 100% sure in effect, but uh, I would think that those scores are not widely available to the public. So I don't think that uh, we can disclose it. I would encourage you to, to uh, rather relook your nomination and maybe update it with the latest information and, and consider resubmitting it. I, I would like to add more um, into that uh, answer um, to really um, clarify um, the um, the work of the nominator for this year. Um, to, be, uh, uh, to be exact, um, the nomination form for 2022 has been updated with new um, contents and features. And uh, it helps nominators even more in um, you know, um, making the very clear and helpful nomination. So um, you do not worry about uh, the nomination for last year. Um, please, if you nominated someone for last year, uh, just access your account and you can see uh, the edit button uh, next to the nomination form that submitted, uh, was submitted last year. And you can update that uh, nomination form with new features for this year. Um, and then you can uh, add more information about that nomination or invention. Uh, thank you for that question. If you need any help um, in getting the nomination form for this year, uh, you can go to our portal and you can download it there. But if you have any technical issues in accessing uh, these forms, uh, please let us know by emailing us at secretariat at vinfutureprize.org. 
Google send you directly the nomination form in a Word format, um, and and you can um, you can use that uh, for your work for this year. Um, Dr. Ming Eng, I think that uh, I, I also want to share about this. I think yeah. maybe one year, for example, last year, that innovation, uh, maybe it didn't have a great score just yeah. because it didn't have the impact at that, uh, that certain time. Right. Yeah. So maybe this year is, can show and can, can prove the impact of that innovation mm. uh, and just in the right time. Yeah. So uh, the the definition of score, it's really uh, complicated to explain. Mm. So we really want to focus once again on the keyword impact in the, uh, the in the everyday lives of millions of people. And that's what we want to focus on in the You are innovation. absolutely right. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much for the question. Yeah. And next question, please. Yeah, I think that um, the next one is both um, a comment um, and, um, and a question. Um, Dr. Ludger Weiss Johan, um, I'm sorry if I, I did not uh, pronounce your, your, your name right, um, ask, say that the committee did a great job and has excellent personalities. Um, however, almost all are from Anglo Saxon countries. An understandable bias, but still a bias. How will you avoid an Anglo Saxon, Saxon view on nominations? So I would like to um, to invite uh, the chair of the Price Council to, to address this. Well, it's a very, I mean, it's a correct observation and it's a proper challenge. Um, I I think the it is important to remember that this is a prize that was dreamt up and delivered in Vietnam, and Vietnam is a very interesting country that is um, rapidly. Um, emerging uh, with a rapidly increasing um, GDP per capita, but it's still a long trajectory. And in Vietnam, I, 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 I see that there is a, a real interest uh, to see the whole world work together. And the, the uh, selection of the um, the, the, the two councils, the committee and the council, um, was th th their choice. Um, and it was, we have a heavy responsibility to deliver on those global obligations. We are very, very well aware of that. Yeah. Coming back to today's meeting, we, can, we, we need great nominations. <clears throat> we will look really hard. We absolutely want to make sure that these prizes reflect what is going on around the whole world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Friend. Um, uh, Dr. Reader um, asked us if you can share the recordings of this session. Yes, of course. Um, please email us at secretariat at winfutureprice.org. We will share with you the recording of the session. And if you want, uh, we can send you even the presentations of the session um, so um, just email us and, and we will try our best to, to meet your request. Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, we will have um, some more questions for today. Um, um, I think that one question that many nominators uh, sent us before the webinar started, um, uh, that what is the focus of the Vin Future Prize that makes the prize unique? I know that Professor Fenn mentioned this in his presentation, but anyway, uh, could you please uh, share again what makes the um, the Vin Future Prize unique? For, for, for me, uh, what I think is so important is the, the we need optimism. We need to we we need to be able to dream and then see dreams become reality. I'm a scientist um, and a part engineer. I, I, I think there is huge potential for the scientific method, for, um, simple, for, for engineering and scale up on a, on, on a scale in a way that is consistent with sustainability. There is a, a huge set of opportunities and it's so important that that gets recognized. The, 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 it's important to have role models that will 
cause young people to make good career choices. So I examples that we must find with the Vin Future Prizes of that new set of possibilities is, uh, is a goal that, that I think goes way beyond where traditional prizes um, uh, do a great job. So in, that's, that's where the Vin Future Prizes are special. Thank you very much, Professor Friend. Um, I think that uh, we have addressed uh, quite very valuable questions for today. Um, um, thank you very much um, for, for spending uh, your precious time with those very valuable questions. Um, before we um, um, move to the, uh, the last part, um, I would like to share that um, if you would like to have the access to the presentation um, of the webinar or the recording of the webinar, or even if you have difficulty in downloading um, the forms uh, for your work, uh, please let us know by emailing us at vinfutureprize, uh, sorry, at secretariat at vinfutureprize.org. I will send you right away the files that you request. Uh, also, um, we are organizing um, online scientific uh, symposia uh, starting uh, this April 27th. Um, so um, we will be very happy to invite you um, to join our, our events um, free of charge. Uh, so uh, please let us know. And um, we would be very happy if you could share this information with your scientific network. Uh, we will be very happy to invite your colleagues as well. Uh, I will turn back to our communication secretary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mingyang. And yeah, like Dr. Mingyang has just said, we only have two more um, webinars, information webinars left. So if you have any nominators that you know care, they care about our foundation, the prize, and also uh, the impact that we are trying to make on the everyday lives of uh, a lot of people around the world, please share the information to them so they can have the chance to, uh, and we also have the chance to talk to them, to share with them about our mission and uh, our passion with science and um, technology. And um, bef because now still there, there, there's still some people just just got in now, you yeah. know. So I still <laughs> want to have one last <coughs> question to um, uh, spend more time with all of you in today's webinar. Yes. So for the last question, I would like to ask uh, one question from Professor Boucher. Uh, could you please briefly tell us about the criteria that were used to select the nominators, for example, field of activity, geography, etc. Maybe this question, Dr. Mingyang can help us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, would, I would be very happy, but I would, uh, I would be um, more happy if uh, our prize council and Prusuni could, um, could help us more. Sure. Um, actually, um, we, um, we at the Secretariat, um, we have been um, doing our research on the top um, scientists in the world um, and the most committed people in um, working in science and technology and even in interdisciplinary sciences and approaches. And um, we try to reach out um, widely, um, as widely as possible to invite as um, many um, committed scientists um, to uh, nominate um, for the Vin Future Prize. Um, especially we have uh, the grand prize and the special prizes covering the female innovators, innovators in emerging field and innovators from developing countries. That's why um, we very much respect uh, the uh, nominators working anywhere in the world in any field that can make an impact on the humanity. And um, that is how um, we could um, honorly fight you and invited you to serve as nominators for the Vin Future Prize. Uh, Professor Friend, could you please um, add more into that? Professor Antashut, uh, could you add more if you have any more ideas about that? Because you guys have been um, with us for a long time in that, in that journey. Yes, uh, Val, the only, only thing I can say from experience from reviewing all of these uh, nominations is that it was really submitted by nominators from, from very high levels uh, from across the world and from many different countries. So it was clear that the, the information about the prize was really widely shared and, and really out to attract the, the best science to be nominated for these prizes. It was very interesting to see who all these <laughs> nominators were, in fact.
Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, a very positive spirit, uh, we would like to uh, conclude our, our webinar today. Um, please email us and um, let us know um, how and what we can assist you in your very important process. And um, please uh, remember that you are very Im important people uh, to the Vin Future Foundation and to the development of science and technology. Uh, please help to identify the deserving nominees uh, for the Vin Future Prize. Uh, please, uh, now I would like to, uh, on behalf of the foundation, thank you very much for spending time with us. And please um, turn on your camera so that we can have a group photo with you. And then we would be very happy to send you the group photo by email. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, we have photographers um, taking pictures from every angle of our office today. So please smile. Um, <laughs> our smile makes our day. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so now we have photographers coming in. So please. Oh my God, you can see that we have uh, people from around the world oh, wow. joining our webinar today. Um, that's the reason why we ha don't have to worry about the bias, right? No, we have no, we nominators have from all around the world yeah. don't care about just uh, the prize council or the pre-screening committee. We still have nominators from all around the world. Thank you very much for joining us today and one, two, three, smile. <laughs> We would be very happy to see you at our scientific activities um, yeah. uh, coming soon this um, April. Um, I will be happy um, to send you the invitations. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. You. Yeah. And for now, goodbye. See you again in the next event of Fin Future Prize. Have Bye. a good one. Have, Have a, a good, good day. Thank you. Stay healthy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And look forward to your nomination. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a good one.